Friday, which means it's a book review, and as the title says, I am here to talk about The Revenge of Seven, the fifth and second to last book in the I Am Number Four series, which is part of the Lorien Legacies, and out of the Lorien Legacies, it is the seventh book that you read. So really quick, I haven't done any videos about this, I kind of mentioned it in a few videos, but I want to bring it up. I Am Number Four, the series, is not by Pitticus Lore, as this title says. This is the actual author's name. I don't know his name, but he's the guy that Oprah yelled at for lying to her. He is not a good man. He mistreats his people who work beneath him. He mistreats his fans, or he did with his first book, and he's just he's not a good guy and pretty much everyone knows it. Because of how he has his history and how he's been treating the authors that work for his publishing company, so a lot of people have been saying don't buy these books. I have no opinion myself. Basically all my books that I got were used or gifts so I've never spent a cent giving money to this guy myself personally. So I really kind of don't care. And so that's one thing you can do because then they don't get your money. I don't believe in piracy no matter what but I really really love these books. The actual running order for this series is different. I don't have all the books in that you can own but I have most of them. So basically you're gonna want to start with this guy. I am number four. Then you want to go to The Power of Six, book two. Then you have to go to the secondary series in the Lorian Legacies, which is The Lost Files. This is the first book of The Lost Files, The Legacies. You have to read these to read the series properly. This is the first three books that you want to read. After that, you want to go to book three, The Rise of Nine. Then you want to read one of the books I don't have, which is book two of The Lost Files, which is Secret Histories. Then, then The Fall of Five and then The Revenge of Seven. That's the reading order. Now, the breakdown of the series itself, as my shelves fall over, because I have them all on the floor, is that this is a sci-fi that deals with aliens. Aliens means sci-fi, y'all. It's not paranormal. If there's aliens, it's basically automatically sci-fi. It can bounce around, but it's sci-fi. Every time. Automatically. It's kind of annoying, but true. Book one is about Four. He is a Lorek, a race from the planet of Lorien, hence the name Lorien Legacies. Yes, my name is Planet. Kind of cool. But his race has been wiped out, his planet Lorien ravaged, and there is no life. He is one of 18 Lorek left alive in the universe, and they have all fled to Earth to escape the Mogadorians. But when they left, the, the elders chose them and gave them numbers for names instead of actual names. If they had names, they don't remember them. And that number was their order. And this charm was placed on them so they could only be killed in order by their number. And so the main character is number four. To quote what a lot of the books say, they found number one in Malaysia. They found number two in England. The opening scene is them finding number three in Ethiopia, and number four is next. I'm gonna try not to be too spoilery, but right now I am going off of this and onto this. So this is going to be spoilery, so you can mute it. The rest of it isn't really spoilery, but it kind of is, because again, this is book five, but technically it's book seven, so. But here is where things are standing in case you need a quick recap. Five has, turns out to be a traitor. He has killed number eight, stranding six, seven, and nine in Florida. But back in Chicago, the penthouse was attacked and Ella, number 10, was taken prisoner. Malcolm was seriously injured, but has been healed. So four, Sam, Malcolm, and Sarah are currently on the run, and they have met up with Adamus from the Lost Files series and the Chimera that he rescued in Secret Histories. I give this a 5 out of 5 stars. And considering I've been reading books where I gave 5s to technically a book that didn't deserve it, 
really was more of a 4.5 because it was really predictable. But this is a full-blown 5 out of 5 in my top favorites of the year. This is really, really good, which is why I keep reading this series. The first thing that I noticed, it is not as depressing as The Fall of Five. This was a pretty dark book, and the ending, which was a cliffhanger, was even darker. But this, while it's dealing with, you know, the fallout of the ending of The Fall of Five, this isn't anywhere near as depressing. And more than once, I ended up bent over laughing. Some of the humor that is in book one and in the other books was returning. And the darkness, the serious tone of The Fall of Five really wasn't as strong. Yes, there's some serious things going down. Yes, it does get crazy, but it's not as depressing. The thing that surprised me the most is the world building. We're on book five, y'all. Technically book seven. And the world building in this book was more than in this book. I didn't expect so much world building in this book. I didn't expect that. It just blew me away. It is incredibly intense. And all these details and rich history is popping up. Up. I mean, what I you learn more about, without being too spoilery, the Mogadorian leaders, Sachakisra, I don't know if I'm saying that right. You learn why Lorien was destroyed. You learn why Ella is on Earth. And you start to learn what reviving Lorien, which they learn in book two, that that's what they're supposed to be doing. You actually start to learn, not fully, but start to learn what that means. Because the whole time they're like... What, what does that mean? I, I don't know. I really, really also love the character development, especially with a character five and seven. That was really cool to see seven mature. Just the title automatically. You're, it's getting pretty serious in here. Especially with five, it blew me away. And I didn't expect that. That was a twist. And I like that at the same time, you still don't know. It feels like Snape in Harry Potter 6, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, where you just straight up don't know, which is really cool. Okay, now getting, again, to the spoilery section. Favorite scenes? Again, I love learning about Ella. And I love, I love that Ella is not going to just be damsel in distress. She keeps fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting to stop the Tatakis Ra, to stop the Mogadorians and end this war. And she's like, well, I'm on the inside. I'm a prisoner. My, and especially when she takes the dick, the book, the, <laughs> then beats the teacher over the head with it, knocked her completely out. That was funny. That was awesome. That was so well done. <sighs> and then nine the clap. Ah, so funny. So funny. So great. That was one of the scenes that had me like falling over of like sheer joy of how hilarious it is. Oh my gosh, that blew me away. That's the scene that had me falling over and bent over laughing so hard. I couldn't breathe and I was crying. I was laughing so hard. Oh my goodness, that was so funny. So nine. I was so happy they had something like that this far along. And the ending. That ending. Oh my gosh, that ending. It just like Dang, y'all, like, that blew me away. Wow. All in all, it's a really great book. I gotta keep reading it. I know so many people have issues with the author. I just, this is from the library. I'm not really supporting the author, really. There's only, like, six copies in my entire county. And it's the, it's the largest county in this state. I don't know if it's the most libraries, but it's the largest county in the state, so... I would love to be like, well, the series isn't good enough to continue, but this is a really great series. So I'm like, I just won't buy new. That's as far as I get. I'm not going to get any other books that he writes. I'm just sticking to this series. All in all, I seriously recommend that you give this a try. Get it from your library, which probably has copies. Get it used. It's still so good. Each book gets better. The only one that was like, Ugh, was this one and even then this is really good and it's really well done so I really 
love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Good luck with your reading, and I will see you on Monday. Bye! Today is... Let's try that again. I just totally lost it. And out of the Warren Legacies, it's the seven book... Seven. Because the publishing company, which is covered up by them... Not HarperCollins. That's their version. That's a movie version. But the publishing company... Come on, stop when you stay at the top. And so there's been a fight. That was a damn fly. I'm sorry, there's a damn fly flying around and I thought it was hanging out over there. <sighs> the fly flew past me. I have no opinion. I like... Get away from me! Great. I to do with a fly while recording. Now, the actual... I'm not on that page. Golly, this fly is so annoying. I'm gonna try to scare it into staying away from me. I can sometimes do that, but sometimes it just makes them come around faster! Four is part of... of the Lorek. His... Four is an alien. Ugh, let me just tell while holding this. Let's see if I can break it down. And cheese. That almost flew up my face. He is one of only 18. And to quote this, they don't say that. Where is it? They found number three in the very beginning. That ugh, I don't have any marks in here. Great. There went half my video. This is book four. Ugh, that's not right. As that's not it. You'll learn more about Citrakis. I can't say that name. Especially between five and seven. Not between. And I. And now it's back. What the hell? I hate bugs. I hate bugs. I hate flies. They're so hard to kill. Worse than cockroaches. You can step on a cockroach. Flies, man. Oh, I hate them. I almost dropped it. So, fly go away.